What's up, everybody? Today, I wanted to share this really special guitar that uh, that I own with you guys. It's very sentimental to me. This is a, I think, a late 90s, 1962 uh, Fender Stratocaster reissue in Lake Placid Blue. And it belonged to my cousin Liz. And, uh, you know, Liz played throughout the 90s, and when she stopped, she said, you know, uh, I'm not really playing anymore, Scotty, but you're playing a lot, so why don't you hang on to this for me for a while? And I've been hanging on to it ever since. It's a really great guitar. Um, like I said, it's a 62 reissue, so uh, from top to bottom, it's got the old, you know, Fender style um, spaghetti logo. It's got a seven and a quarter radius rosewood fretboard, which they introduced on Strats in the 60s. They didn't have them in the 50s. Um, it's got a big chunky uh, C neck, which I find very comfortable. 21 frets, um, like most of the vintage Fenders. And um, as far as the color, Lake Placid Blue is a really famous Fender color. It's like a metallic sky blue in a way. Uh, I've never been to Lake Placid. I don't know if it's actually the color of the lake. I doubt it. Um, but the rest of it's pretty run of the mill. You know, uh, Strat has a five way switch. It's got, you know, pick up, both pickups, pick up, both pick up, bridge pick up. And it has, in this case, a vintage six screw or six point trim. And this is actually the guitar where I first learned to set up a vintage trim to float. And the way I did that was I watched a YouTube video of a famous player named Carl Verhane explaining how he does it. And what you do is you take the two outside screws and you keep them tight with the body, but you raise the four in the middle. So what you wind up doing is getting your trim to, to pivot on the two outside screws like this, which is better for tuning stability. And then what you do in the back where the springs are is you match the tension of the springs here with the tension of the strings on the guitar when it's tuned to pitch so that when you dip the trem, the springs will pull back equally to zero. If you raise the trem, the springs will pull back equally to zero to where your strings and springs match tension once again when the guitar is tuned to pitch. It's, uh, it's physics, it's cool. And then this thing is what we call the claw and this is where the, uh, the springs attach to. And if you angle it ever so slightly, what'll happen is you have the ability to um, raise or lower a certain uh, amount of intervals on your strings when you dip. So, you know, this is a certain calculated pitch. Uh, I think that's a third. Um, and you can raise it a certain calculated pitch as well, which is very musical and what a trem was kind of designed to do. If you guys like Jeff Beck or if you have heard of Jeff Beck, he makes great use of this kind of thing. If you don't know Jeff Beck, listen to Jeff Beck. But anyway, um, I also have some custom pickups in here. These are wound by a company called Rose Pickups from the Bay Area, I think San Fran. Um, and they wound me a set where it's, you know, your regular 60s style pickup, but in the bridge position, they wound a little bit hotter. So if I, you know, kick on the bridge for a solo or if I'm doing, um, I don't know, like rhythm on a rock track or something, I can get some more gain out of this pickup and get a bit of a thicker sound being a Strats. You know, I think Strats kind of sound thin sometimes. Uh, but this definitely is a, is a great set of pickups and they really do the job. Um, but anyway, not much else, you know, um, a favorite guitar of mine, even though it is a Strat, I'm not really a Strat guy, but this is just a wonderful instrument and, you know, um, in every way. And, uh, I don't know, Liz, I'm really thankful you lent this to me. I love this guy. And, uh, the rest of you guys, well, I'll catch you next time.